so far in Halifax? Comment vous aimez Halifax? Je m'appelle René Arsenault, je suis effectivement le député fédéral du Madawaska Resti Gauche, donc dans le nord du Nouveau-Brunswick. Also, I'm the, uh, the chair for Athletic Caucus in Ottawa. And not to brag Athletic Canada, I wouldn't do that here, but I'd like to say that I'm very proud to chair 31 Liberal MPs, and together, the last election, we won 100% of the, the seats in Athletic Canada. Le prochain invité euh, que je m'apprête à vous présenter, c'est quelqu'un que j'affectionne beaucoup, tout particulièrement pour son énergie, il est assez hyper, sa sincérité, mais aussi parce qu'on apprend à le connaître de plus en plus, avec les... ça, fait déjà, ça fait déjà deux ans et demi qu'on est élu, c'est quelqu'un qui a une très belle personnalité. C'est un homme d'affaires accompli, il a été avocat, et depuis l'élection de 2015, il a été d'abord nommé secrétaire parlementaire du ministre des Finances pour ensuite devenir notre ministre actuel du Commerce international. Mesdames et messieurs, je vous demande d'accueillir l'autre petit gars de Shawinigan. Shawinigan, on le sait, c'est la région du Canada qui nous a laissé le fameux slogan « Que voulez-vous? » Alors, mesdames et messieurs, sans plus tarder, je vous demande d'accueillir chaleureusement le ministre François-Philippe Champagne! today. What a great moment to be here. And um, let me just start by saying thank you to all for being here at this time. After all, I might be the only champagne you have today. So um, I'm really proud that at 11, you all woke up to be with me. And, and for my friends, uh, my francophone friends, merci d'être ici aujourd'hui, d'avoir pris le temps uh, d'être avec nous à Halifax pour parler d'ambition, de connectivité et évidemment d'excellence. It is good, my friends, to be in Halifax, to be in Atlantic Canada, which was the start, as you know, of a political wave in 2015 that carried us across the country and into victory. And with hope and hard work, I am confident that history will repeat itself in 2019, my friends. The liberal roots are deep in these regions, you know it from liberals past like Angus L. MacDonald, Louis Robichaud, Joe Giz, Joey Smallwood, to today with liberal governments in all four provincial capitals, and an incredible roster of liberal MPs in every single federal seat in this region. This is quite of an achievement, my friends. I'll give you a secret. I love this town, and I love the people from Halifax and I've managed more than a few trips out east. And whether in private or in my capacity as Minister of International Trade since we assumed government. I am, after all, as many say, your Chief Marketing Officer. And there's many reasons to promote Atlantic Canada, to market all of Canada to the world. I know Atlantic Canadians get it. You were born global, and when it comes to trade with the world today, it is my intention to make this century's Canada's to shape and to own. Nous partons d'ailleurs sur une base très, très solide. Les gouvernements libéraux qui se sont succédés ont été les principaux artisans de l'ordre économique mondial du 21e siècle. Le système dont nous avons hérité a marqué le début d'une ère nouvelle de prospérité et de paix sans précédent à la suite de tumultes de deux grandes guerres mondiales. Le commerce constitue aujourd'hui le principal moteur de la prospérité économique du Canada. Et mes amis, pensez-y. Le Canada représente environ 
0,5 de la population mondiale et 2,5 du commerce mondial. Alors, quand je suis à l'étranger, je dis souvent à mes homologues que le commerce, après tout, ça fait partie de l'ADN des Canadiens et des Canadiennes. Le Canada est un acteur mondial et cela exige un véritable leadership et une ambition nouvelle que nous a donné notre premier ministre Justin Trudeau. Le Canada a une occasion extraordinaire d'établir les conditions du commerce du 21e siècle, de tirer parti de ses forces uniques et de réorienter la façon dont le commerce mondial est régi afin que les retombées profitent au plus grand nombre de familles canadiennes qui, comme vous le savez, travaillent extrêmement fort d'un bout à l'autre du pays. Il est tout naturel de vouloir augmenter nos échanges commerciaux. Un emploi sur six au Canada est lié aux exportations, et vous le savez comme moi, ces emplois sont souvent mieux rémunérés. The calculus for doing trade differently should also be clear. My friends, you know, these are uncertain times for the global trading system. Not since the Great Depression of the 1930s as cross-border trade faced more resistance, especially in places where traditional manufacturing has been disrupted by automation, mechanization, and competition from abroad. The disruption has led to anxiety in far too many corners of our country. The disruption has given rise to populism and protectionism in many countries around the world. Unfortunately, the policy debate around the world is either one in retreat from itself or a blind faith that the status quo will somehow prevail. There is real anxiety, but opposition solution is a return to the old ways. While the Harper Conservatives were in government, they were prepared to do every deal at just about any cost. For them, the impact of trade were simple. The benefits to Main Street today, and perhaps, only perhaps, a trickle-down benefit tomorrow for everyone else, not that they would lose any sleep over it if it didn't happen. The Arpershire Conservatives you know it, are more concerned with the impact on millionaires than the average working Canadians. You know, I know, that Canadians deserve better. Les conservateurs de Harper et Shears sont plus préoccupés par l'impact sur les millionnaires que par l'impact sur les travailleuses et les travailleurs canadiennes. Je le sais, vous le savez, les Canadiens et les Canadiennes méritent beaucoup mieux. Negotiations are always difficult, but Prime Minister Trudeau is laser-focused and has rallied Team Canada to the cause of a better way forward on trade, and I'm extremely grateful to serve as your Trade Minister. We are proving that better is not just possible, but with hard work it can and it will be achieved. Thank you. And we will not yield to those who prefer the easier route or the stagnant ideas of days gone by. My colleagues Bill, Krisha, Navdi, Melanie, and Lawrence are working as one, committed to ensuring all voices are heard and all stakeholders are represented in trade negotiations. This is Team Canada at its best. This, my friends, is true leadership. But let me say a few words about how we're now connecting Canada to the world. We are, of course, determined to put NAFTA on the best possible footing for the 21st century. And I would like to take a, mom a moment to offer my continued support and true admiration for the work of our foreign minister, my friend, our minister of foreign trade, Christian Freeland, on that very strategic file. She deserves all her support. She deserves all your applause, and we will make sure that she sees these applause wherever she might be now defending her interests. But my friends, you understand that there's never been a better time to diversify. In fact, 
I believe it's an imperative if we are to truly grow the pie and create more opportunities for the middle class and those, as you know, who are working hard to join it. With CEDA, our landmark trade agreement with Europe that we secured last September, Halifax is now closer than ever before to Hamburg in Germany. With CEDA, we have secured a market of 500 million consumers, public procurement in the trillions for Canadian businesses, while protecting our sovereignty and our environment. Less than a year into force, CETA is already proving to be a great success story for Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Let me give you just one example. Since we are in Nova Scotia, let's talk about lobster. And after all, I spoke so much about lobster when I was last in the UK that the BBC called me the lobster man, which I thought was quite funny from a guy from Shawinigan. <laughs> Overnight, lobster now has huge competitive advantage over lobster from New England. They just can't compete anymore in the European market. That's what it means to open market, providing opportunities for fishers or farmers or small and medium-sized businesses in our country. Yes, we should applaud because those are the people. We do trade agreements to provide jobs to Canadians. That's what this agreement is doing across our country. And with the revised CPTPP signed last month, we have now added a further 500 million consumers in Asia to the ever-growing pie for our businesses. Another 14% of the global GDP is now open to Canadian businesses with preferential market access. This is a true achievement, my friends. Once again, we took what was the TPP, a deal that the Conservatives were prepared to ink at about any cost. And we took back control of Canadian sovereignty and our interests from culture to intellectual property. Canadian content and ideas and innovation are not only secure now, but are opposed for amazing success in Asia. That's the impact of the Liberal government. These two agreements together have opened up markets to a billion consumers for Canadian exporters and our small businesses across our nation. But we're not stopping there. You would not expect people who have as a slogan hope and hard work to stop there. We're also negotiating with Mercosur, a union of Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay and Paraguay to add another quarter of a million, quarter of a billion consumers to our hemispheric trade. We are moving forward on expanding membership with the Pacific Alliance, a union of Mexico, Peru, Chile, and Colombia, adding another quarter of a billion consumers to Canadian businesses. In addition to the new CPTPP, we're exploring talks with ASEAN in Asia, a dynamic market of 660 million consumers Imagine the potential where more than half of the population is under 30 years of age. This is what we're doing for Canadian workers and Canadian business. We are bridging the gap between North and South, East and West. Let me tell you, we're not just a country of 36 million. When it comes to global trade, it is preferential market access that matters. It, with our work to diversify access for more Canadian, we are set to become the most connected country on earth. And while I was with our prime minister in Paris, we were chatting and we said, let's realize that Canada is at the center of trade in the G7. In fact, Canada is the only country with a free trade agreement with all other G7 countries. This is Canada in 2018. This is Canada on the world. This is Canada for our workers across our country. Alors que nous œuvrons à la création de ces débouchés, nous devons aussi veiller à ce que ces, ces accords engendrent de la prospérité. Je voyage, comme vous le savez, aux quatre coins du pays pour représenter les avantages des accords que nous avons conclus. Nous devons continuer de travailler ensemble pour que ces accords se traduisent par une prospérité réelle dans chacune de nos régions, dans nos villes, dans nos communautés, dans notre ruralité au pays, pour que les Canadiens qui travaillent fort et leurs familles puissent avoir de bons emplois. Ensemble, nous pouvons établir de nouvelles plateformes 
pour aider les Canadiens à réussir sur la scène internationale et ainsi créer un plus grand nombre d'emplois bien rémunérés pour la classe moyenne au pays. Mes chers amis, chers libéraux, non seulement il est possible de faire mieux, mais nous prenons des mesures concrètes pour y arriver. So let me spend a few minutes to talk about our progressive trade agenda, something I'm extremely proud of that we have crafted for Canada and which everyone is looking at us around the world. For all these reasons, we believe it is time for a progressive trade agenda that will reach through the fog and noises and show hardworking Canadians that they have a voice, that their skills are needed, and when it comes to global trade, that Canada is their back. The bottom line is simple, my friends. Too many groups, particularly workers, women, indigenous peoples and youth, have not fully shared in the benefits that had come from trade. We can and we must do better. Mr. Scheer seems to think that Stephen Harper's old way is just fine for today, that the benefits naturally trickle down to those disconnected from markets and without the tools to engage in them. Mr. Scheer, let me be very clear. When it comes to global trade, this is the signal we are sending to the world. Canada will fight for free trade, fight for the rules we need to govern it, and most importantly, for the right and capacity of more Canadians from all walks of life to compete and win on the world stage. My friend, Mr. Scheer on the idea on trade is to start negotiation with the UK. He went so far as to travel there last month. Well, I hope he had a good trip. I'd say great idea. In fact, it's so good that we had the same idea but six months ago uh, when discussion with the UK were announced. Mr. Scheer, if you're watching us, perhaps if you start by looking into the present rather than in the past, you might also stumble on a good idea. Granted, I'll give him that, six months old is actually pretty recent thinking compared to some of the ideas of Andrew Scheer and Stephen Harper's party. Progressive trade is about protecting our sovereignty, tapping into our innovation, and making sure that the new credo for trade is that this must be a march to the top, not a race to the bottom. Canada expects us to fight for strong environmental rules, strong labor standard, and strong governance principle. This is what we are fighting for Canadians in our trade agreements. Nous devons protéger les acquis chèrement gagnés par nos travailleurs et nos travailleuses à travers le pays, et grâce auxquels l'étiquette faite au Canada, made in Canada, signifie aujourd'hui quelque chose d'extraordinaire des exigences rigoureuses en matière de santé et sécurité et une approche responsable tout au long de la chaîne d'approvisionnement. Nos travailleurs répondent de leurs produits et doivent avoir l'assurance que leur gouvernement les appuie. Budget 2018 made equality of access and opportunity a central pillar of how we can grow and strengthen our economy. And I'm very proud, and I'm sure you're proud of the work of our Minister of Finance, Bill Morneau, for that. We are taking that approach into our progressive trade agenda and into our G7 agenda to ensure that more women-owned businesses are expanding internationally, engage in trade, and reap the, re the rewards that come with it. Prime Minister Trudeau once again championed a better way setting the stage for our first ever gender chapter in a trade agreement with Chile, ladies and gentlemen, and pushing us to go further with ones to come, and including one to be announced next month, and I hope you're going to be staying tuned. This is Canada at its best. This is Canada leading the way in the world. This is the Prime Minister making sure we make a difference in the lives of people. And when I think about that, Tara comes back to mind. A woman who has pioneered a new candy, that is actually good for kids and has grown from an idea to a success right across her country. Tara is just 23, 
and she wanted her business to go global. Tara's knock on every door and is the kind of young entrepreneurial women we need in the hundreds, I'm sure you would agree. What we need is to be better at supporting them, reaching out to them, providing more tools for them to succeed, grow and create more jobs, and encourage more entrepreneurs in the process. So we reach out to Tara, and we are providing introductions, advice, and support for her to expand in the US. And with CETA now in force, the next stop for her is in Europe. Canada has many Taras. I'm sure that each and every one of us know of one. We just need to make sure we empower them. It is time to make their dreams our priority because we know that when we do that, we all succeed together. We are no longer going to play with half of the team on the bench. I can tell you that, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to make sure we win with everyone in the game. It is time to get more people in trade, fight for the rules that govern it, and unleash the world's most creative, dynamic, and diverse workforce in the world. That's the Canadian workforce. We believe in Team Canada and drawing on all of our strengths. I am so pleased to announce you three, in three initiatives we'll be taking this year. And if you, there's only one thing you remember, just bear with me for a second. In 2018, Canada will lead a woman business ministerial trade mission. We will also lead the first ever LGBTQ2 trade mission and the first ever trade mission devoted to indigenous business owners and entrepreneurs. We want everyone in Canada to succeed. We're going to lead the way in the world, making sure that every community reaps the benefit of trade. We have every reason to be proud. And we're going to do that together as liberals, showing to all the others that when you have a liberal government, that's the difference we make in the lives of people. Le moment est venu pour le Canada de faire preuve d'ambition. Ensemble, nous pouvons faire du Canada le cœur du commerce mondial, nous connecter à un plus grand nombre de marchés mondiaux et connecter plus de Canadiens à ces derniers. Now is the time for Canadian excellence and innovation in marketing and e-commerce and the full suite of 21st century tools that will lift more Canadians into prosperity. My friends, now is the time for a new approach to trade and for more Canadians to have the tools to capitalize on it. So in conclusion, three message. Let's seize the moment. There's never been a better time to be Canadians. Let's be ambitious. Brand Canada has never been stronger in the world. And thirdly, let's, to make, let's together make trade work for people in all regions in Canada, with Liberal MPs in all writings of Canada. Thank you very much, everyone. Bonne journée.